Apple spent only a couple of minutes talking about the new 15-inch MacBook Air, but does that mean it's identical to the 13-inch model? I, I've done some digging, and the differences are far bigger than you might have thought. So let's clash these two Macs together and find out which one is the best bang for the buck. I'm gonna say an obvious thing, but the most apparent difference between the two is the size. But jokes aside, this size difference actually means more than you think. Both displays are Liquid Retina, which is just a fancy word for IPS. No mini LED in either laptops, no ProMotion, no impressively high brightness, 60Hz refresh rate, 500 nits of peak brightness, an absolutely identical pixel count of 224 pixels per inch. Both displays support P3 wide color gamut and true tone. From my time with a 13-inch MacBook Air, I can say that this display is great. Colors are vivid, everything is super sharp, and color accuracy is near perfect straight out of the box. But the size jump from 13.6 inches to 15.3 by many people isn't seen as much, but in reality, Reality, the screen real estate on the 15-inch model is roughly 20% bigger, which translates to more efficient and comfortable workflow. And believe me, I regularly jump between laptops and when I jump from the 13-inch Air to a 16-inch Pro, I feel every inch. The display is bigger and that's a great thing. But the size difference is not only about the display, the laptop is physically bigger, which in theory should make it less portable. However, Apple's engineering magic and super slim and lightweight body make sure you can still carry it around no problem. Of course, the 13-inch will be more comfortable due to its smaller weight of 2.7 pounds, but the 15-inch is not that much heavier, 3.3 pounds. So I will say that both laptops get a solid pass when it comes to portability. Also, a larger body means a larger trackpad, the new trackpad is noticeably bigger and you cannot overstate the importance of having a bigger trackpad. Again, the trackpad on the 13 inch is already huge and has never caused me any troubles, but you know how it goes, the bigger the better. I think we're done with obvious things. How about something more subtle? like speakers, for example. The 13-inch MacBook Air has a four-speaker configuration located under the keyboard, with sound coming from behind the display hinge. This is not a very good solution since the sound gets distorted and refracted before it reaches your ears. Speakers with grills like on M1 MacBook Air or MacBook Pros are far better in this regard, and the 15-inch MacBook Air follows exactly the same path as the 13-inch model, at least partially. Instead of a four speaker setup, it has a six speaker setup. This new setup apparently has two small woofers, which makes sound more rich and deep. Tests online confirm that the 15-inch model sounds better, not dramatically better, but better. I'd say the sound improvement is just as big as the size improvement if you catch my drift. But of course, the sound from the 15-inch Air will never be as good as on the 14 or 16-inch MacBook Pros. <laughs> but still, the speakers surely are decent, pretty loud for their size, have spatial audio support and all bells and whistles that you would expect from a MacBook. As for the ports, there is absolutely no difference. Same port placement, same ports, same bandwidth. Two machines are absolutely identical, so if you decide to get the 15-inch Air, get ready to spend extra on dongles, adapters and stuff like that. Let's take a minute and talk about the sponsor of this video. Right here I have a portable monitor, Intel U16NA. The Intel U16NA is an amazing portable monitor that's perfect for people who travel a lot and need an extra screen. Featuring the highest resolution in its class, it has an impressive 4K resolution, delivering super sharp visuals and vibrant colors. Its almost identical size to the 16-inch MacBook Pro ensures seamless integration into your portable setup. Setup, equipped with a 10-bit color panel, 8-bit plus HIFRC, and P3 98% color gamut, this monitor offers exceptional color accuracy and depth, making it an excellent choice for professionals working with graphic design, photo editing, and video production. The 460 nits brightness ensures clear visibility even in brightly lit environments. The monitor has a sleek and stylish design, it's lightweight and easy to carry around, so it won't weigh you down 
when you are on the go. The best part is that you can easily connect it to your MacBook even without an external power source, which makes it a perfect one cable solution. And if you not only work but chill, you can easily hook up PS5 to it and enjoy games in 4K almost anywhere. Overall, it's the perfect companion for your on-the-go needs and it's much more affordable than other competing monitors. So check it out by clicking the link in the description. Now let's move to more subtle differences like battery life. If we open the official website, it will tell us that the 15-inch MacBook Air has exactly the same battery life as the 13-inch MacBook Air. What's surprising is that Apple claims that these MacBook Airs have the same battery life as the 14-inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro. 18 hours. Is it true or not? Well, again, speaking from my experience, the 13-inch MacBook Air can give you 18 hours of battery when watching movies online, but most of the time with normal workload, the 13-inch model can roughly reach 10 to 12 hours, which is still super impressive. And if we count in a bigger battery of the 15-inch model and its bigger display, I think it's fair to say that the battery life indeed is comparable. Yet the tests online show that after being loaded the same way for exactly the same time, the 15-inch MacBook Air has lost slightly less juice than the 13-inch model. I think that even if the 15-inch model will live longer than the 13-inch, the difference will be minimal, like 10 to 15 minutes or so. Trust me, that's not a lot. But the most interesting difference between the two is the performance. That's the most interesting part and right now I'm gonna tell you everything. Starting with configurations. The base 13-inch MacBook Air is equipped with the M2 chip that has 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores, 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of SSD. The base 15-inch, on the other hand, has a more powerful M2 chip with 8 CPU cores but 10 GPU cores. A 13-inch model can also be equipped with the same chip for extra $100, but I think there is no point in doing that. Both laptops are passively cooled, which makes the performance comparison so much more interesting. Most reviewers actually compare 13-inch and 15-inch models with the same unbent M2 chip, so I will just use that data. Tests show that the SSD speeds in base laptops are virtually identical, since both have only one NAND chip. What to me seems like the most interesting question to be answered. Does the bigger size help with heat dissipation? The 13-inch MacBook has a smaller footprint, thus less space for heat to dissipate through. But what do the tests say? Starting off with Geek Bench, a bursty CPU test where throttling shouldn't be seen. Here, both laptops perform identically, with differences in scores being well within the margin of error. That's precisely the result we expected, since the CPU part of the chip is identical for both machines. In Cinebench, which is another CPU test, both machines scored almost the same number, with 15-inch being faster by 5%, but that's on the first 10-minute run. If the test is repeated, both laptops start thermal throttling. But even so, the 15-inch still scores 4.5% higher, and after the third run, the 15-inch pulls ahead and scores 6.3% higher than the 13-inch. Cinebench clearly shows that throttling does affect both laptops, but on the 15-inch, due to its size, it's a bit less pronounced. If we look at super smart graphs, we'll see that the clock speeds during testing are higher on the 15-inch model, as well as the power draw. At the same time, the temperatures in the 15-inch are lower and substantially, 90 degrees versus 99 degrees. Seems like a bigger body does the trick, helping the chip retain more of its performance under the sustained workload. These results may seem positive, but from my experience with the 13-inch Air, I can say that if you decide to do any heavy work on either of these machines, you will be limited pretty much in an identical way. Okay, we're done with CPU. How about testing that GPU? Here, tests vary substantially. Some are testing the 13-inch with 8 GPU cores, others with 10. It's obvious that systems with the same number of GPU cores will perform similarly, with the 15-inch model being a tiny bit faster at times. So instead of looking at numbers, let's look at something real-world, like gaming, for example. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 15-inch MacBook Air has scored 48 FPS in the in-game performance test. While while the 13-inch scored only 40 FPS. This shows what a difference it makes to have a bigger body with more space to dissipate heat. When it comes to real workflow, the results are also predictably interesting. Importing 228 heavy images in Lightroom took almost the same time on both machines, with 13-inch air strangely pulling ahead by a full second. Pasting the same preset on all images took 3 seconds less on the 15-inch model. Exporting these images has yielded the 
strangest result. The 15-inch base model did it almost 8 minutes faster than the 13 inch with the same specs. I think that either has to do with the throttling on the laptops or the Lightroom just doesn't recognize the 13 inch air as a viable machine. In the Blender Classroom rendering, the 15 inch strangely didn't pull ahead, losing to the similarly specced 13 inch by 5 seconds. Really weird results. So what about the performance? They are identical, that's what. If you spend a 100 extra dollars on the 13 inch air, you'll get the same performance as the 15 inch model, but that will leave only $100 price gap. Which one should you buy? I'd say you shouldn't buy either one. But if you are hellbent on a fanless MacBook Air, I'd say the base 15 inch is a better deal than a base 13 inch. Bigger screen, bigger battery, slightly more performance, and a better power brick in the box. However, if you need maximum fanless power for less, the 13 inch Air is a better deal. If you invest 100 bucks in extra GPU cores and 200 more in extra memory, bumping it to 16 gigs, the 13 inch will cost you $13.99, while the 15 inch with the same upgrades, $14.99. However, if you are not planning on growing and your workflow has stayed the same for years, then I'd say the 15 inch is better, simply because of its size. 15 inches is better than 13, and there is no way around that. But again, I said it time and time again, instead of getting the Air, it's always better to find a deal on the 14 inch 2021 MacBook Pro. And to learn more about how the laptops compare, watch this video on our channel. Thank you very much for watching guys and see you in the next one.